Oh, hey. Didn't see you there. It's us again. The Charity Stripe. Joshua Fisher, Alexander Toss from the Octosopolis. Nikki Snacks, Crider, best of Believe here on Stadium. We have more great Believe content coming your way. Enjoy this clip. Two Believe hosts, one podcast, tackling a new kingdom. Tank Johnson, host Believe in Bengals' own Adam Pacman Jones. Enjoy. Fred T calling me like, yo, I don't think you should do, do nothing with, with Brandon. He bad business. First of all, bro, whatever your business was wasn't my business. That's first and foremost. Second of all, I don't need you to tell me how to handle my business. Right. You get what I'm saying? So um, that has that the relationship before that has nothing to do with me. Um, my relationship with Brandon is golden. Um, I treat him how I want to be treated. He treat me how I want to be treated. Now, as far as the past relationship, hey man, shame on you. Shame on you if you didn't have your business right. Right. You get what I'm saying? So. Uh oh! Does anybody smell a rivalry brewing? That or it was already seemed like there was a, was a rivalry. We have Pivot, Channing Crowder, and Fred Taylor, and versus now versus Brandon Marshall and Adam Pacman Jones on I Am Athlete. Who Adam Jones has done a celebrity boxing match? Who wins in a celebrity boxing match fight? Pacman or Fred Taylor? I mean, I, I think we. I, I I don't think I can comment on this. Whoa, Nick with the no comment. You know what the funny thing about no comment is? It means so much more <laughs> yeah, than we dude. think it means. You think Pac cares? Pac's gonna pick himself any day of the week, dude. Yeah. Pac Man Pac Man would pick himself if he was if it a forty yard dash, if I was like, Pac, you versus me in a four yard dash. If he was in crutches, he'd still pick himself. And honestly, I'd I think pick I would too. too. Yeah, I'd probably pick him too. <laughs> no, but for real though, in all seriousness, I I mean, hey, it's cool. I mean, it's cool to see, obviously, yeah. Pac, you know, star with us, Believe in Bengals, branch out now to I'm Athlete and do his thing, and they're crushing with it over there, and he's crushing with Simon Wilcott's Believe in Bengals. They're going to Bally's, Ohio. Um, but who doesn't like a little rivalry? And these guys are competitive guys by nature. They are. I think this is going to happen more and more, right? Because thank should. thankfully, more former athletes are taking on roles in the media. Yeah. And there's going to be beef. The guys that played against each other, like, yeah. they're going to have leftover... Yeah. Things to settle a little Kobe from, beef. from when they played. Yeah, well, I mean, when the guy retires from the league, right, He's his mind doesn't really change. He's still that competitive guy who yeah. wants to go out and, and seek out competition and seek out beef. I mean, that's that's who Pac-Man was on the field. And I'm sure Fred Taylor was the same. That's what Brandon Marshall is for sure. And it's just interesting that Pac is taking the side of the offensive player, right, and Fred Taylor and Brandon Marshall, both offensive oh, players. Oh, wow, yeah. Very, Defense very, versus offense. Did, I, never, I never really thought of that. It's very interesting. Another very interesting clip coming your way. We have one more coming at you guys right here, and it is On the Edge with Slash, Cordell Stewart's new show. Enjoy. Mr. Crab there in New England, we forgot all about that conversation. Have that hasn't even existed yet. I haven't you know, forgotten about of, that. I haven't. Right. You know, it's, it's Cordell. I, I would not guess this is episode one of On the Edge because, man, you're you already right. you're amazing at segues because that was that was where I was going with that <laughs> in, in terms of consistency. Right. I mean, yes. I think that, that the, the biggest hypocrite in this all is Bob Kraft because he's the one who came out and said after and again, great clarification there, not the NFL, but after Judge Sue Robinson suggested a six game suspension, Kraft was the first owner to voice his disappointment and say that the punishment needed to be more severe. But this is the guy getting on his private jet, going down to Florida, getting rubbing tugs. So the pot calling a kettle black, if you will. Right. It, it, yeah. So, you know, it's, it, it's a double standard and mm -hmm. because they know it's a double standard, they can say stuff like this. They can make those types of mistakes and it'd be okay. Mm -hmm. But yet when it comes to the players, it's almost as if they're being held at a higher standard because of maybe let's just say the public the public figure or the the celebrity of the player uh, uh when it comes to the teams it's almost like they're the ones that's so i'm not saying deshaun watson doesn't doesn't get off the sny here if you will he's going to get what he has coming to him based on what the ruling is going to be with the national he's at the mercy of the national football league but the owners aren't at the mercy of the national football league why because the owners are the national they're goodell's league. bosses can we just talk about how Joe Cerullo, who we love, we love. Yeah. He he really was trying to butter up Cordell. Yeah, I hope he put some chapstick on before he smooched his behind. I'll say I'll say that much. But Cordell had brought, brought Cordell himself did bring up great points. And it's gonna be interesting to see if the NFLPA uses the Robert Kraft situation and points to the double standard. There are things are different. Like what Kraft did going down to Florida to get some tugs was illegal. Like you can't do that. Soliciting prostitution. 
Deshaun Watson. Per, first of all, pretty wild that you have to take a flight down to Florida just to get some tugs. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to com- – no comment on that, but you, gen- you generally don't have to. The Deshaun Watson situation, though, is vastly different. Uh, it's a different complaint from the female perspective. So I will say it's going to be interesting to see how that's utilized. The NFL is going for one year for Deshaun Watson. He is going to get – he is going to get penalized by that, but I'm mm-hmm. curious to see if the NFLPA does bring that up because there is somewhat of a double standard because the owner, you know, don't get punished. It's not like Robert Kraft's getting suspended. At all. Right. Well, I do think as well, you mentioned that it's a different situation. It was complaints by several women on Deshaun opposed to, it was like a sting operation, right? That where Kraft got. Yeah. He got signed up. Yeah. For sure. So that is a very different situation. But we'll see. It's an interesting point by Cordell. We'll go now to another podcast, another clip. This is a great one for you guys. We have right here, Believe in Lions with Glover Quinn and Jack Cavanaugh. Enjoy. Pull out some of the college stuff, right? Like, nah, we're not going to take your pick, but you're not even eligible to make the playoffs this year. Ooh. You're not even eligible to make the playoffs. So you're playing games knowing... Man, we can't even make the playoffs. All oh, because our coaches was trying to recruit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you start doing stuff like that. Now you now, right? Because in the NFL, guys know I only got so many years. And I can't waste a year. So to play a whole year, knowing that we can't make the playoffs, I really don't even want to play this year. I'm wasting hits on my body. My my body only got so many hits. And I'm giving them out, trying to win games, knowing that we can't even make the playoffs. Right? Like, imagine being those college programs, right? That these kids, kids, nowadays, right, get punished for something that the team did before they was even there. Right? I wasn't even at USC when this was going on but now i'm punished for i can't even make a bowl game is that fair well nfl hey your owners are trying to recruit players at this before the legal period there's got to be a punishment for that love jack's outfit he's like he's like exciting weekend at bernie's right there with the bow tie that's and that's the, every week it's every week that's every weekday weeknight that's he never takes the glasses Cavanaugh. off yeah yeah i don't know what his eyes look like so you, you, you think you don't know what matt taylor looks like i've known jack cavanaugh a lot longer i have no idea what his eyes look like cordell i mean sorry. i don't even know what his upper look looks like either because he always has that stash it's very true glover quinn's got the believe hat love that swag like utah's i think it's a very metal point by glover though so like, metal like cut them out of the playoffs playoffs like that would be crazy i mean think about how fast you would lose the locker room i mean the guy would have to sell the team at that point well, because they would the, never play for an owner like that think about the other owners in the nfl for other teams dude i would if the just dolphins go- can't make the playoffs that's one other afc team that can then make it the one distinction of course that needs to be made is that you you pay your players right and yeah. obviously now the nil we talked about it earlier in the show is come to fruition, right, and exist in college football, but you were penalizing an educational entity prior, and it makes more sense. And it's really, it's really tough to say like you can't make the playoffs because that's direct revenue for a team if they do make the playoffs. Yeah, that's the biggest point. There is the NFL never wants the opportunity to lose viewers. They are going to lose an entire fan gonna base. Do this. It's just an interesting point. You're going to lose an entire fan base. Yeah, right. The Miami Dolphins have a huge fan base, and you so, never want to hurt the fans. And of course, you want to hurt the players. It's not their fault. Yeah, no, you don't. But I think it's. They've penal- I think the penalty they've handed out losing a first round pick. That's big enough. They're not going to tamper again. But I definitely think it's very hardcore. For if you're yeah. not hardcore, <laughs> let's still live hardcore. And it's very the hardcore. Legend of the Rent. <laughs> yeah, it was way, it was way hardcore. hardcore. Legend of the Rent was way hard. Thank you. That was the tenacious D reference. That was surprised. The metal point. It was actually uh, School of Rock. School of Rock. The le- oh. Wow, that is School of Rock. And you know what else? This is best of leave. We have more great clips coming your way. We have Rudy Gay, the Speak Easy. We also have Jacob Sersasimo, Believe in the ATP Tour. And once again, Unfiltered with Casey Stern. We're the Cherry Stripe, best of leave on Stadium. Don't move a muscle. We'll be right back. 